Hello again for you. Uh, our topic this morning is polynomial functions and our goal, I can describe the characteristics of a polynomial function including degree and behavior and local extremes. Uh, so we're going to wrap up the characteristics of polynomial functions. Hopefully you found out all of this stuff when you did your investigation, uh, but I'm going to recap it to make sure that you got out of the investigation what you're supposed to. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some of the characteristics of polynomial functions. Now this picture here is a fairly typical polynomial function. Uh, hopefully after the investigation you can look at that and see that it's got to be a polynomial function where the um, degree is odd. And the reason we know that is because it starts and stops in opposite directions. Okay. And you learned something about extreme points yesterday. Extreme points are um, maximums and minimums. Now an odd function doesn't have any um, absolute maximum or absolute minimum because it goes as high as infinity on one side and as low as negative infinity on the other side. So you can't get higher or lower than negative infinity. Um, so they're not absolute extremes. However, it does have what we call local max and local min. And a local max and a local min are just bumps and hollows in a function. So this is an example of a local minimum. It's not the only local minimum on here. Here's another one. Okay. Uh, and there, this is an example of a local maximum, but again it's not the only example of a local maximum. There's always that one as well. So there are lots of local extreme points. A local extreme point is one where um, it's the highest around the other ones that are right beside it. So those are what local extremes are. Now a polynomial function of degree n will have at most uh, n minus 1 extreme points. So if we take a look at this one, this has 1, 2, 3, and 4 local extreme points. So this function must be degree 5. But depending on exactly how it's been transformed, it could possibly be degree 7, uh, maybe even degree 9. We don't know uh, completely for sure, but it has to be at least degree 5. It can't be anything less than that. So that was n minus 1 local extreme points. A polynomial function that has r local max or min points will have a degree of at least r plus 1. Okay. So this has 1, 2, 3, 4 local extreme points, so it must be degree 5 which we've already talked about for, um, for its max and mins. Okay. A polynomial function of degree n will have at most n x-intercepts. That's at most. Now this one doesn't have 5 x-intercepts, it's only got 2. But if we were to do something, just a simple transformation here, I'm just going to trace this very quickly. If we were to do a very simple transformation, which is to just move this down a tiny bit, we would then see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x-intercepts. Okay, So a very simple transformation would turn it into that. It doesn't necessarily have 5, but it can't possibly have any more than 5. Um, and the last fill in the blank for the graph, given graph, there are four local extremes, which means it must be at least degree five, which we've said numerous times now looking at that. Now, finite differences. The nth differences of a polynomial of degree n will all be the same, and this common difference will be equal to the product of n factorial and the leading coefficient. This thing here is said it, n factorial, the exclamation point is in math considered a factorial. 
and a leading coefficient of a to the n is, remember, um, with the highest value of the x variable. So if we're going to write that as a mathematical statement, we say the common difference is equal to the leading coefficient times n factorial. And this tells us what n factorial is. n factorial is where we take n, which is the degree of the polynomial, multiply it by the number that comes before n, multiply it by the number that comes before that, multiply it all the way down to 3, 2, 1. So if you're not familiar with factorials, something like 6 factorial is actually 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 and then times 1 obviously which doesn't change anything. Okay, So this is what a factorial actually means. So from the given table determine the degree of the function and its leading coefficient. Uh, shouldn't have a apostrophe. Okay so how do we determine the degree when we're given a table of values? Well, we have to take the finite differences. And remember when we did finite differences for linear and quadratic, what we do is we subtract these things, only we're going to subtract them upside down. And when I subtract them upside down, I get negative 12. Subtract negative 36, and be careful with your negatives, uh, I get a positive 24 negative 2 subtract negative 12 is 10, 0 subtract negative 2 is 2, 0 subtract 0 is 0, 4 subtract 0 is 4, 18 subtract 4 is 14, and 48 subtract 18 is 30. Now this is called our first difference and had it been the same this polynomial would have been of degree 1 uh, which is what we studied in grade 9 is linear. Uh, but they're not all of the same. Um, I'm going to finish this off. And we can see now that I finished this off that this here, which we call the second difference, it is not the same either. If it had been the same, this would have been of degree 2, which is quadratic. Uh, and then we go one further and we see that the third difference is actually all the same. They're all sixes, so this is the one that matters, which means that this thing is of degree three, since the third difference is the same. This is degree three. And degree three we call cubic. And now we're going to find the leading coefficient by using this formula. The leading coefficient must be the common difference equal to the leading coefficient times the n factorial where n is the degree. So the common difference here was 6. a is what we're trying to find, the leading coefficient, and n factorial is going to be 3 factorial which is 3 times 2 times 1 or 6. So this is going to be 6a equals 6 which means that our leading coefficient is simply 1. So I know that the leading term, the first term in this polynomial, I don't know what all of the other ones are, but I know the first term in the polynomial <coughs> is 1x cubed because this is a cube. Moving right along. <coughs> the finite differences are taken for a polynomial function and the sixth difference our differences are all found to be negative 2880. What is the leading coefficient of the polynomial function? Well, we know that the common difference has to be equal to the leading coefficient times the degree factorial. So the common difference is negative 2880. It told us that. Uh, A is what we're finding and we know that the sixth difference was the same, so this is of degree 6. So we go 6 factorial. Now 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now your calculator should have a button for that. We'll pull up this calculator. Um, the button for factorial on this calculator is right here, this x factorial. Um, so we are going to type in 6 
and hit that button factorial and I get 720. So 720 times A equals negative 2880. And then we're going to make that division. Negative 2880. Um, negative 2880 divided by 720. And it is 4. So our leading coefficient is 4. For a polynomial of degree n, where n is odd, we're just going to summarize what it looks like. The n behaviors are opposite. Same as what we did with power functions. If the degree of the polynomial is odd, it's going to start and stop in opposite directions. So the n behaviors are opposite. If the leading coefficient is positive, it will go from negative infinity to positive infinity from the third to the first quadrant and the slope, overall slope of the graph will be positive. So that means that the one that I just sketched up here roughly, if you, as we look at it, the overall slope is negative because it's going down. So this must be the second case. If the leading coefficient is negative, it will go from positive infinity to negative infinity or from quad 2 to quad 4. So, and the general overall slope of the graph is going to be negative. There will be at least one x-intercept and no more than n x-intercepts where n is the um, degree we set up there. There are no um, absolute extremes. Absolute means an actual highest point or lowest point. The domain is going to be x is any real number and the range will be y is any real number because it goes from positive infinity to negative infinity in the whole thing. An odd degree polynomial may show point symmetry or it may not. So here are two examples, and if we take a look at them, um, this one is definitely odd, starts and stops in the opposite direction. Its general overall shape is positive, so this must have a positive leading coefficient. And we know that it has one, two, three, four local extremes, so it must be at least degree five with a positive leading coefficient. This one over here, the general shape of it as I go from left to right goes down, just the big general overall shape. I know there's some ups and downs in the middle, but generally its overall shape is down. Uh, so it must have a negative leading coefficient and it has one, two local extremes. So it must be degree three, at least degree three. It might be five, might be seven, but it's at least degree three with a negative leading coefficient. So now let's have a look at when it's even, the end behaviors are the same. So it's going to start and stop in the same direction. So this kind of thing. So if the leading coefficient is positive, it will go from positive infinity to positive infinity or from the second quadrant here to the first quadrant here. Uh, and the overall opening of the graph will be up. Now that doesn't fit the little graph that I just drew on here. This overall opening of the graph is down. I can put a put something in the bottom of it. Um, if the, so it must be the next example. If the leading coefficient is negative, it will go from negative infinity to negative infinity or from quad 3 to quad 4. And the general overall opening of the graph is down. There may be anywhere from 0 to n x-intercepts. Okay, This one has two, but if this whole thing was shifted down a little bit, we could have four. So anywhere from zero to n x-intercepts, and if we shifted it down all the way, it wouldn't have any. There will be at least one absolute extreme, which will be a max or a min. 
in this case the rough sketch this is the absolute extreme because it's bigger than this other they're both called local extremes but it's bigger um, and it's a maximum because it's on the high point uh, the domain of the graph is the same as for odd x is any real number however the range of the graph if the leading coefficient is positive will be y is any real number but y is less than if it's positive it must be pointing up so it has a low point y will be less than the absolute max and if um, the leading coefficient is negative which is less than zero it must be opening down which oops I got these backwards. Um, so let's just do this. If the leading coefficient is positive, it's opening up, which means that it must be um, bigger than the absolute min. So we need to, I hope I didn't confuse you too bad there because I don't have time to go back and record the whole video. Um, so we'll just pull all of these down to that and we'll sort of fix this up in a minute when I show you the example. Y has to be bigger than the absolute um, min. There. Okay, that's what it should be. Uh, an even degree polynomial may have line symmetry. And so let's have a look. Here's two um, even degree. We know they're of even degree because they start and stop in the opposite direction. Oh, sorry, in the same direction. They're, these, this one starts and stops down and this one starts and stops up. So they're even degree. This one here has one, two, three, four, five. Um, local extremes, so it must be at least degree 6. Here is our local maximum point, and it's actually our absolute maximum point as well, which means that the uh, range of this function will be y is any real number such that y is less than this point, whatever this is. Let's call this um, let's just call this max. So y is less than the max. Now this one over here is pointing up and here's our absolute minimum. Um, this leading coefficient must have been positive um, and we know it has one, two, one, two, three local extreme points so it must be at least degree 4. And we'll get our range from this point here. Y is any real number such that Y is bigger than this point, which is the min. And we know the leading coefficient must have been po positive because this opens up. The leading coefficient here was negative because that opens down. And that wraps up this summary video.